Hello, this is Nick from DCM Bioservices, and in this tutorial we're going to be showing you best practices and basic troubleshooting on your Terumo SCD2B tube welder. As always, if you don't feel comfortable performing any of these steps on your own, send us an email at service at dcmbio.com and we'd be happy to assist you. When running a weld with your Terumo SCD2B tube welder, it's important to firmly place the tubing into the tube carriers. And locking them down, first with the motor mounted carrier, then the frame mounted carrier until you hear a click. When loading a new wafer, do a firm and slow motion to load the new wafer up, removing the old wafer by hand so it doesn't fall into the instrument and beginning your weld. When cleaning your welder, it's best to use some form of wipe. Avoid spraying anything onto the deck of the welder as the control board and the power supply are housed immediately below the top cover. Simply wipe down the carriers, the weld assembly, and anywhere else you may see some contaminants. If a wipe isn't sufficient, you can use a toothbrush with a little bit of alcohol. Same concept, simply scrub any area that you see contaminants. When transporting your tube welder to storage or another lab, first unplug it and make sure to carry it either from the base or from the carry handle. Make sure that the tube carriers do not contact anything else as you can knock the alignment out. Never store it on its side, upside down, or stacked, as again, this will cause misalignment problems with your welder. One great feature of the Terumo SCD 2B tube welder is the beep error code. This will help you to troubleshoot and identify any issues that your Terumo welder has run into. When immediately powering on the system, if a power supply issue is detected, a repetitive beep will occur. Typically, you'll need to replace the power supply and DCM will be happy to assist you with that. One common beep that occurs is at the beginning of a cycle when the check mark is pressed. This typically indicates that something is blocking your motor function movement. It could be the lock sensor at the beginning, or it could be a used wafer somewhere in the assembly. If there is a wafer in the assembly, see if you can get it through the top using a pair of pliers or a pair of hemostats. Another beep that can occur is during the wafer loading process. When loading a wafer, a sensor in the rear and front of the load track will detect whether or not a new wafer has been loaded. If you hear a beep when pressing the two button to begin a weld, it typically means that your new wafer hasn't been detected. Try reloading the wafer and seeing if that resolves the issue. During a weld, a beep can occur as the heating element is beginning its cycle. Typically, this is a symptom of a bad heating element or a bad temperature probe. And again, this is something that DCM can help you with. If for some reason, at the end of a cycle, the lock sensor is tripped or your tube carriers are nudged, the welder will throw an error saying that the cycle was not complete. Simply reload your tubing and your wafers and try again. Sometimes it's necessary to realign your frame mounted tube carrier. That's on this left side it has the lock sensor associated with it. To realign it, take a 7 standard Allen key and loosen the two fixing screws located in the front and back of the tube carrier. Once the screws are loose, you'll be able to freely move the frame mounted carrier into whatever position you need. Open the motor mounted carrier and align the two so that they match up correctly. Once in position, Simply tighten the locking screws and run a test weld to confirm that your new alignment is correct. Sometimes it's necessary to align the wafer tension bar on your welder. You'll know this is the problem when wafers are either loose in your load track or sitting a little too high at the beginning or end of welds. To adjust this, simply take a flathead screwdriver, loosen the two fixing screws, and manipulate the wafer tension bar with your fingers. A good alignment is contact in the front with a loaded wafer, 
with the rear as close to the right side of the instrument as possible. Once you're in a good position, tighten down the lock screws and run a wafer through to ensure that the alignment stays through the entire process. Occasionally, the wrong type of tubing or some other accident can occur and result in a jammed wafer blade. To remove a jammed wafer blade, the first thing you'll need to do is remove the frame mounted tube carrier. This can be done with our 7 ths Allen key. And similar to the realignment, we'll first loosen and then remove entirely the fixing screws. To make sure you get the entire screw washer and lock washer assembly, perihemostats or pliers are recommended. Next, take a pair of pliers and carefully remove the wafer by first leaving an empty wafer pack and doing a partial load just to remove a little bit of tension on the pin. Grip the wafer in the front, pull forward and up to remove your mangled wafer. Once that's done, simply replace the frame mounted carrier Reinitialize and home the welder. And follow the realignment steps outlined earlier in this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional questions, put them in the comments below. To see additional how to lab automation videos and to check out our service options, visit dcmbio.com. If you have more in depth questions or need to contact us about servicing your equipment, send an email to service at dcmbio.com. You can find links to our LinkedIn, email, and website below in the description.